Hello everybody, welcome, happy Sunday to all of you out there, and whatever you do, don't go exploring caves during monsoon season. <laughs> or ever. <laughs> or ever. We watched 13 Live, so hit the intro! T-minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6. Alright, welcome everybody. If it's your first time here, we're two dads who love all things fandom out there. From Star Wars to Star Trek, Marvel to DC, and Middle Earth on down to Westeros. We even like movies too! We love it all. Can and you want believe to bring... it? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I can believe it! We love it all and we want to bring all of our insights and love of all things nerdy to you, our viewers. So if that's your cup of tea or your snack of custard cream... We're here for you, and you should subscribe <laughs> to our channel. It helps us out a lot, and helps other amazing folks like you find this show right here. So subscribe today if you can. So thanks for tuning in. My name is Chris Matthews. And I'm Matt Parham. And uh, <laughs> a little background. You know, sometimes in um, our broadcast here, we don't get to review the things that we've watched as quickly as we want to and True. so i had totally forgot about <laughs> the custard cakes or whatever those were <laughs> up until creams. this moment yeah. custard creams yeah you mentioned it a couple <laughs> of the times in the show yeah yeah they um that that was well played in the movie i, yes, I gotta say for what little Love humor it. was in there like oh that that was pretty funny <laughs> yeah so what are we do what are we what are we reviewing today, Matt? We're reviewing 13 Lives, directed by Ron Howard, written by William Nicholson. And this actually came out in limited release in the theaters. Uh, I didn't know this until I looked it up here today on July mm -hmm. 29th. But it was also released for streaming on August 5th, and that's where I caught it. I got it on Prime. Where did you end up watching this, Matt? Yeah, same thing. I had no idea that it was even out, and we have I a wish. United Artists Theater yeah. um, about 15 minutes away. Um, I, I know a very few of those, and that's the only theater that this, or the United Artists um, franchise of theaters was the only one that it was released in. Theater. Yeah, so and I wish uh, I could have seen this in the theaters, yeah. guys. It is, Man. spoiler alert here. I love this movie. What about you, Matt? Mm -hmm. well, let's, let's go into our reviews oh. here. Yeah, I absolutely did. And uh, not only do you need to try to find the biggest screen that you can watch it on because of the level of detail, um, and Chris and I will get into that in a moment, but uh, the sound quality is a, a part of this film, a part of this art uh, that you just have to experience. So if you have surround sound or any kind of, uh, you know, high quality system at home, make sure you've got it queued up because you'll want to have mm. it in place um, to get the best out of this experience, I think. Right. And we didn't mention it too, but uh, just so for the viewers out there, we're robing it up because it's Sunday morning. We're two dads and we're we're, we're a little bit more uh, relaxed on this episode, if you yeah. didn't know. I wish you get yeah. a wide shot and have the feet up on the desk, too. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could get my feet up over here, but uh, just yeah. so you guys know that. But, yeah, the sound quality, right, Matt? The sound quality oh. on this was pretty yeah. amazing. Everything about this. so mm -hmm. Everything about it was done very, very well. So to get into um, our thoughts on this show... Uh, it was an incredible experience. And to me, the entire point of why you go to the movies or why you watch high-quality cinematic television because you're drawn into a world that you are largely unaware of. Um, yeah. And that's how I felt. That's how I felt whenever you hear the taglines of movies like, You'll, you've never seen this before, or we'll show you something. Right. This movie actually did it. 
Like, I and, have never experienced anything like this. <laughs> right? And, like, when you mentioned wanting to review 13 Lives, I had no idea about this movie. So I was going into this extremely fresh. I didn't look at the trailer. I didn't do anything like that. I just looked it up and searched for it. And when I started watching 13 Lives, I had to double check. I was like, am I watching the right movie? And I was like, it's all subtitled. Is this the right 13 Lives that I'm watching? And I was like, oh, no, this is. Ron Howard directed this. And... I gotta say, it was quite an experience just going into it without knowing anything about this film, and Wasn't so it? that that was awesome. I gotta say, it was so much fun. Do you you recall the experiment that we tried uh, several years back, where um, yeah, I heard about the movie The Impossible, mm-hmm. and I told you, let's try no yeah. marketing material, whatever. You watch it cold. Was it like that for you this time? This was the perfect experiment for that. Yeah, this this was exactly like that. I don't think, like, did we get to, I don't think we got to actually do that, though, with The Impossible. No, because I had, I had seen the trailer yeah. uh, on top of some movie that I had watched. And right. I, I said, you know, because the title didn't give anything away, <laughs> the cast doesn't really give anything away. Right. So I thought, oh, a per- this is a perfect movie to try. I'll just tell Chris... Mm-hmm. When it premieres, go see the, see the Impossible and don't look up anything, no posters, nothing. Just yeah. walk into that theater and not know. Um, and so I will say, for audience members that have not seen 13 Lives, if you are interested in that experience, stop our review right now and come back to it later. Stop it. Because yes. we definitely would not want to ruin that for you. It, definitely. This would be a great movie to try that for. And you can always come back to this YouTube channel, subscribe, of course. And and watch this after you Absolutely. watch it. I, we both highly recommend that you stop this video if you haven't seen Thirteen Lives and go watch mm-hmm. it right now. And this is uh, we're going to do this from time to time, guys. Um, and this isn't our regular thing that everybody is watching. This is a kind of movie that it was under the radar, at least for me. I think Very for a lot so. of people too. So we want to do this. We want to highlight really good movies out there that you're not watching. And that you might be interested in. And this is definitely one of those. Yeah, and I don't even think Amazon Prime promoted it all that much. I remember by the time I saw any marketing material for it at all, it was already premiered. So, And, I mean, um, you got heavy hitters here. You got Ron Howard. You got Viggo Mortensen. Colin Farrow. It's a Joel Edger- Egerton. He's a mm-hmm. Uncle Ben in uh, Star yeah, Wars. It's right? like, come on. It's like all-star yeah. cast. Oh, my gosh. And... You know, relevant mm-hmm. topic, too, that we heard about a few years ago. It's just, man. Yeah. It's got it and all, so this but will, for some reason. This avoids spoilers a little bit, but I couldn't believe the caliber of acting that we got from Colin Farrell and Viggo Mortensen. Not that they're bad actors at all. It just, they disappear. Disappear. Once again. Roles. I mean, don't sleep. On Colin Farrell, he is just killing it lately with his performances oh and disappearing completely in his roles. I mean, God, yeah. Batman alone. Holy crap. Mm-hmm. Oh, and did you see him in True too. Detective? Yes. Totally offbeat. And, I, oh, man. you know, he's been in the Fantastic Beasts series. Right. At least in that first one. And uh, I know. I wish they would have kept cry. him in that, yeah, <laughs> that character. Right? <laughs> Yeah, it, it it was a missed opportunity, I think, for yeah. that franchise. Um, with so the Colin level Farrell of, killing it. Yeah, it, it it was incredible. And as a note, I, I looked up a little bit because, I mean, even the first twenty minutes, I I didn't recognize him, and and he's the secondary really? main character. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I started seeing a little bit like, oh, his face looks vaguely familiar. Um, and then I read up on it late, later that he had shaved his widow's peak. Um, he decided to start running long distance marathons. Yeah, he was very skinny in this. Yeah, yeah, and he just he does he does this now. He transforms yeah. into whatever role he's taking on, right. and it is amazing physically. But then his acting, the little nuances, his mannerisms. The way that he talks, even the pitch of his voice changes per character, and it's incredible. It, it it's just amazing. It, yeah, it's think so... of all the work you got to put in to do that. I mean, just yeah, it's yeah, it's impressive. And to turn it on and off, I, yeah. I I can't imagine what you go through mentally. It's it's pretty crazy. So right, um, but 
for everybody that's wanting to to press pause, now is your opportunity because after this we're going to get into it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, pause all right go um yeah, so yeah these uh <laughs> if if you didn't know carl colin farrell is one of the main characters he plays uh john volenthen he's like an it guy mm -hmm. and uh richard stanton is played by vigo mortensen they're like the buddy team and it's amazing yeah. matt like these two like they they scuba dive they, they cave dive like just mm -hmm. as for recreation, this is their hobby, and they're just <laughs> extremely good at it. This is kind of what we, me and Matt, want to do with uh, with films and TV and everything. We're yeah, no, I was gonna say I, I don't remember talking <laughs> we're, about this. We're part, not on but, that league. Okay. Obviously, we're not we're not best in the world. But it, it was really cool to see those two characters. You got a retired uh, firefighter and an IT mm -hmm. guy, and these two just go. Out of the kindness of their hearts, they go to the uh, to help out in this really yeah. bad situation. And I don't know about you, Matt, but that just like my faith in humanity was very much restored after this movie. Just oh, seeing man. all the efforts, not just them, not just the divers and everything, but mm. the engineer that comes, all the locals that help out, uh, the governor who is keeping so, it all together, the army. Oh, my God. There's so many people coming together on, to help out. On screen performances, there is over a 1,000 people yeah. featured on screen from yeah. countries all over the world, very much like the actual event. I yeah. mean, they, they put so much into the casting, even down to the extras. Mm -hmm. It was impressive. It, it totally shows what a huge, gargantuan effort Mm -hmm. was put into place to save these kids. And, and all uh, of these pieces have to come together in order for you to successfully pull off something like this. Something impossible. It literally mm -hmm. was impossible. And Viggo Mortensen's yeah. character says it right away. Like, whenever they, they dive in there and they make the, what, six-hour journey underneath this cave to for get to For that one section. Boys. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, like, how could you spend that much time underwater? That's, that's and that's that is incredible. And if you guys, like, if you watch this movie, like, I, I feel like they do a good job of kind of showing you how, how dangerous that is. But at the same time, they don't show you how difficult that is. It's extremely mm -hmm. difficult to dive for that long. Six, can you imagine six hours underwater and everything? I don't know what kind of scuba gear they had, but a lot of them have, like, rebreathers as well that scrub the oxygen some of them have nitrogen in them, so you get a little loopy after a while if you're scuba diving, um, and it's just and you can get the bends and everything. And there's so many mm -hmm. complications, and and they show you in that one scene where where the guy like accidentally knocks over the hose and everything, and just like yeah. that, in a matter of seconds, at any time in that six hours, you could die, and there's nothing you can do. There's no place you can go. And this is why I'm never going to cave dive or do anything like that. Because, And yeah. this is my phobia, too, watching this movie, being in confined spaces. I'm a little bit claustrophobic, so I really felt it. The tension was very high during this. And so I've, palpable the yeah. entire time. And not just inside the cave, right? I was impressed with how many shots and... I mean, uh, he's an amazing director, but kudos to Ron Howard yeah. for bringing in the outside elements. You know, every time you get a shot of the sky, I, at least I the know, sky I and was the rain. looking for clouds. Like, oh, yeah. holy crap, is there and another one coming? It. Like, You're like, oh, yeah. no, yeah. this is crazy. Just, the amount of water that they had mm -hmm. to get rid of and yeah. redirect and it being such a huge undertaking was put in the spotlight to show, Definitely. you know, Yes, these divers risked their lives, and they did an mm -hmm. incredible job, but it was a communal... I mean, it was really an international yeah. effort. It did, and it had to be a whole body of help that got mm -hmm. these kids out, and it's just amazing that they were able to do that. And it was so cool yeah. just to see all those elements come together and all these people... You know, yeah. put aside all their stuff. Even the farmers, you know, that were willing to give up their crops. And they, they didn't get guaranteed compensation or anything at the beginning. Mm -hmm. They're like, will this help them out? Will they get out? And they're like, well, we'll give, it'll give them a chance. And yeah. they all agree. And that was beautiful to me. That scene in itself, it just just tears at the heart. I'm like, mm. I just like, oh, it, was, okay. it was amazing to see that sort of humanity put into this film. And you don't mm -hmm. see that too often. We, we get a lot of very, 
you know, hard things to watch and a lot of dark stuff that we have to watch. And, and a lot of that it takes place because, you know, that's kind of the, our society today. So seeing a story like this portrayed on film, thank you, Ron Howard, for bringing this up. Thank you to the writer, William Nicholson, for writing this beautiful piece. I mean, it, it definitely adds to my, my overall movie-going experience. And I've said this many times on our our show, but I look forward to a movie that I get to watch that changes my outlook or makes me feel something while I'm watching it. So I'm for the better for watching 13 Lives. So hats Absolutely. off for that. I can't agree more. That is very well said, man. Uh, I mean, you watch this you watch this movie, you really go through this experience with the actors, and you mm -hmm. see the level of authenticity that's put into every single moment in the film. Oh, man. You don't yeah. feel like, at least I didn't, like there was any moment that was overplayed for drama or anybody that was given like too much of the heroic spotlight. I felt like they did a good job showing all the people. And, and like the first half of the film... There's all these tiny little moments where different people are meeting each other, having to do with different parts of the rescue operation. Mm -hmm. And they're asking each other, you know, where did you come from? And people are just saying, like, <laughs> I just came. I just showed yeah. up, you know. I mean, plane tickets. It's just nobody, like, flew them there or something. They, they got there because they wanted to help these kids. And like you said, it's very, very inspiring. Um, you know, gut wrenching to see the parents so throughout the see. film. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't. Im I just kept being in that mental space with them. Mm -hmm. Like, and I just felt how it in too. the world would I deal with this on day ten? Yeah, oh, man. I, I <laughs> definitely felt it too when they went and found them for the first time ten days later when they were stuck in that cave. The these young boys and that coach just oh man. You know, yeah. surviving in there and just being so polite to the divers. would be like, we're hungry. Mm -hmm. um, can you help us out with that? And just being so calm. Nobody freaking out. Nobody yeah. freaking out. And, like, the hats off to the coach for keeping the boys calm and together. They would Let's meditate during world, that buddy. time. we got to yeah. call this guy out. Played yeah. by <laughs> Tiradon Supapapunipinyo. <laughs> Supa Puna Pino, yes. <laughs> Supa so, Pupa we're doing our best yeah. with the names, guys, here, but he did <laughs> he plays an the coach. Yeah. Ekapal Chantawong was the coach mm -hmm. in this. Yeah, and he does an amazing job at keeping the boys together. And later on in the in the show, whenever they're reading the letters from their loved ones, he's like, I can't believe they're thanking me. I thought they would they would be mad at me for leading Didn't the boys that in just here. Oh, kill tore me apart too. Like, like he's been sitting guilt. with his grief the sitting. entire time. Right. And they make a point. I, I don't know if you read about this, but uh, one of the really interesting shots of this movie, which there's so many, so um, many, is when they do finally find them, mm -hmm. and they have to go away. They're given, you know, new fresh flashlights. Yeah. But the coach immediately has the kids turn them all back turn off, off, and yeah. it just sits there in the dark mm -hmm. a little bit, and you have to then you immediately are drawn back to the reality. But that's how they have been functioning yeah. for 10 days. Like, no no indication of what mm -hmm. day they're on. They've just had to live second right. by second in that dark environment, wet. Yeah. Nowhere to find food. No idea where to go to the bathroom or find right. fresh water. Yeah, um, That was one thing that came up when I was looking up the technical details of the film is that, um, of course, the two main characters advised... Um, on their own characters, the diving experiences, all the technical details. Rick Stanton, the uh, character that's played by Viggo Mortensen. Viggo Mortensen. Yeah. Um, yeah, the real guy said that the authenticity in this film was perfect. Just absolutely mm -hmm. perfect. The only thing that they didn't get right was the muddiness of the water. And he said, well, of course, you know, they couldn't do that because you have to be able to see as an yeah. audience. Um, but that is also what was so cool about this. We talked um, a couple episodes ago about how CGI is a great asset to have in your film or your TV show when it doesn't come off like CGI. And yeah. that's put on perfect display in this movie. All the little particles and stuff in the water 
are largely put there by CGI and they're, it's invisible to you. You just accept that as part of the reality of what you're seeing. And, uh, man, I mean, the production crew, everybody just did a fantastic job. Right. On this movie. Can, it's, it's, can you imagine, too, like when they got to the T section there, when uh, Rick and John, Colin Farrell's character and Viggo Mortensen's character, got to the T section and kept going, it's like that's uncharted territory at that point. And like, like uh, Rick Stanton said there about how muddy the water was, it's like, can you imagine yeah. – trying to go through that fine any because they're like squeezing through these areas too and sometimes with these divers that do these uh these cave dives they have to take their equipment off in order to like fit and nudge through these little holes and trying to navigate their way on through and you can go down a passage that goes nowhere and get lost and guess what your oxygen might go out and you might die so every yeah. time they go and especially that first time that they dive into there john and rick do they know that this might be it for us. We might be dying. And they're voluntarily doing this. And when they get to the kids, too, and Rick is very much pragmatic about that situation, whereas John wants to give these kids hope, and they find him like, oh, we're going to get you out and everything. And Rick's just, like, sitting there like, uh, what, are, what are you saying? And, like, and yeah, they get out of there, and everybody this. is so happy that they found the kids, and Rick's just like, they're going to die in there. There was no way we're going to be able to get them out because earlier on the show, they pick out the guy that is just struggling just really close to the entrance of the cave, and he bonks mm -hmm. his head and just freaks out. And he's like, there is no way we're going to be able to get these kids out six hours underwater going through these stretches that are really tight. And especially, like you said, with the mud, it's just like, yeah, that looks like a hopeless situation, you know? Yeah. And nobody yeah. realizes that first until, like, they explain that. And it's just like, ah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's and nuts. they talk about that that last section being the long tunnel. Um, yeah. Being the most difficult part because of the current as well. And we saw well, that a little that bit. That too, yeah. With how they, they did the CGI, you know, you can see the current because of those particulates mm -hmm. floating through the water. Um, but they had to deal with that almost 100% of that first section yeah. going to both to the kids and back carrying gear carrying kit i mean i i think about how like, exhausting that must be oh back to the future <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> we right. think about how exhausting that must be though i mean and you are you whenever you're exhausted like that whenever you're exerting so much effort you're using up so much more oxygen so if they do that if they're not staying calm then they're going to use up most of their oxygen. And that, um, yeah. They had a lot of the divers, the Navy SEAL divers in Thailand, had to stay behind because they didn't have enough oxygen to come back. So Struggling we got to that. see that as well. And so, like, like I said, they did a great job at showing how difficult this was. But it, And even though they showed how difficult it was, it's still way more difficult than you, you could possibly imagine oh, to yeah. get down there. So, Well... Vigo Mortensen and Colin Farrell both did a lot of their stunts, which yeah. is amazing because mm -hmm. you think of being just underwater as an actor for that long. Of course, there's safety precautions put in place. Yeah. But I kept thinking that the entire time. How did they film this? I mean, there's close-ups of them squeezing through these different stalactites yeah, right. and slagmites, and it just looks so impossible. So... Um, one of the things that they did to recreate the authenticity of that experience was they largely built um, huge interiors of this cave, both the submerged sections and the sections without the water, just lots of you know fountains and pumps and all that stuff mimicking mm -hmm. what was going on in the actual cave. Took an entire airport hangar, made two Olympic-sized pools in it, and then basically built the cave out in sections. They would take one section, about 20 feet by 20 foot, foot section that they mm -hmm. would dive into. Oh, and man. so they were submerged the entire time in those tiny little things with the film crews, usually just one-on-one -on -one type of situation um, with the safety crews just outside. And uh, they would film it, get that 20 foot section done with for both uh, the beginning and ends of the films, you know, coming both forward and back in the tunnel and then they would build the next 20 feet. And they, they built a huge part of what that cave actually looked like and the underwater tunnels. That's insane. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, wow. for these actors to mess with. They, uh, Colin Farrell said he was going through panic attacks throughout the production. I would too. <laughs> yeah, Viggo Mortensen went through a few of them as well, but they, they wanted to get it right, mm-hmm. and they put in an extremely uh, large amount of hard work to, they did. Um, to portray this correctly. They did, and the budget for this was $55 million, um, so <laughs> they, they did very well for the budget that they had in this, and I can't, like... The amount of work and effort to put all that together and have it look realistic. It is a damn shame that we didn't get this in the theater for longer as well. Because, man, this was such a good movie. Everybody was bringing their A-game from the production to the actors. So, oh boy. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it was a sight to behold, and it makes you think, like you said, Chris, this is amazing just to watch. Yeah. But what would... Uh, how inhuman of a feat did they accomplish in doing this for real for real i I can't i can't imagine that much time underwater i can't imagine getting kids through that i can't imagine being the parents waiting outside for all that time Uh, it's (sighs) it's just incredible at every step of the way it's like they they get to one step they find the kids yay and then they're like no no i mean that's not like they're gonna die in there and then once again, when they when they present the idea to Joel Edgerton's character, Doctor Richard Harris, who's like, we have to anesthetize these kids; they have to be out for this, and we have to tie them up and everything. And he's like, no, I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. That's not ethically possible. I, I took an oath and everything. And eventually, it's like he comes around to that idea because there's just no other way. And then they finally are able to pull it off with one kid. And then they're like. Now that we got one kid out, they're going to hammer us if we don't get every mm-hmm. kid out alive. And so yeah. you even feel that like it's the stakes are still extremely high for them to get every other kid out. And when they, they get to that small child that they couldn't get a mask on and they kept trying to find one, they had to ship one in from out of country. And, <laughs> yeah, and, oh, and they finally man. get that small pink mask to him. And they're like, it's still not fitting. It's still not fitting. I'm like, ah! Oh my God! How they I, gonna I was kid doing out? exactly that through so many sections, Ooh. just literally hands I on my know. head. You do that a lot. <laughs> like... Be prepared to be like, ah! and you know, and the effort. When he drops like... the syringes and stuff like, oh jeez, oh no! <laughs> oh. And then when the kid stops breathing as well, and he's yeah. like, oh, and he pulls him up, and all all the t- the tension is there throughout this movie, and. Oh my God! the The amount of effort it just, to just dive and do this six hours is crazy. But imagine having to try to hold onto a, a, a mask onto a kid that it doesn't fit well onto, and making sure that that kid is breathing properly throughout that entire dive coming back. It's like the that's incredible. I don't know how that diver yeah. was able to and sustain that 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 seal on that mask the entire time. I was like, this kid's dead for sure. It's like, he's yeah, dead Yeah, and, and sure. there's no backup plan. Like, you no. can't make him breathe. It's no. It's like, the sedation's in, pro- you know. This was it. And it's just like, the, you felt that the whole time, like, because yeah. he was the last, he was like the first one that was going to go, and then he ends up being one of the last, you know, uh, apart from the coach, which I like that the, you know, the coach was the last to go, you know. And it was just, oh, just the tension. The tension was crazy. But uh, it really, yeah. really was. And like um, we said, this was a miracle that they were able to pull this off and that everything worked out. But at every step of the way, they were just trying to figure out the problem, trying to figure out the best solution to get there. And that's that's what's beautiful about our, you know, being human, being our society is like we we see a problem and we don't have an answer for it. And we can come together as a society and figure that out and Find a way. Find a way to do the impossible, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. And Ron Howard's a, a stellar director at showing this in a lot of his films, right, Matt? A hundred percent. If this looks familiar, of course, yeah. many of you probably recognize Ron Howard's name from the Andy Griffith show. He brought a lot of yep. authenticity. That... <laughs> yeah. I do love the Andy Griffith show, though. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> little Opie was played to perfection by Ron Howard. <laughs> but uh, um, no, of course, I'm talking about Apollo 13. And, um, you know, Ron Howard has done these uh, procedural disaster type movies before, of course, mm-hmm. with Apollo 13. 
sorry, I lost it there for a second, Apollo 13, um, and Everest as well. I, I've seen Everest, and uh, it's based on the Into Thin Air book, if some mm -hmm. of you have read that. Um, and I, I think that he did a good job with that movie, but honestly, this film that we saw this week, 13 Lives, felt a lot like Apollo 13 in that you have a massive amount of people trying to bring other Absolutely. people home. You know? I definitely saw and, the parallels with Apollo 13. Yeah, well, and Apollo 13 is a movie that is not stunted by the fact that everybody goes into the theater knowing that they made mm -hmm. it back alive. You know, it's no spoiler. No. It's history. And I think people that were aware of this happening in 2018, you know, if you remember back, because unfortunately we've had a, a couple of these underground <laughs> uh, tragedies yeah. over the past few years with Peru and the, all that. Oh. But um, And the guy who got... Uh got trapped in the ship underwater off the coast of yeah. Africa. Did you hear about <laughs> that, like, dude? How are people keep doing this? I know. <laughs> Didn't know but, if he would uh, ever see anybody ever again. Well, and I never realized how just senseless of a mistake this was. Like, yeah. I didn't realize that they were just off of practice and ran over there real quick to explore the cave and, and then, you know, pop back out for a birthday party. That was like, just gut wrenching. Like, oh crap! What are you doing? Don't go in there. It's about to yeah. rain. <laughs> I know, and it's like right after practice, I'm gonna go like you know miles into this cave Spelunky. too. I'm like, don't do that. Yeah. So I knew automatically. I was like, why? Why are you doing that? Go home. <laughs> yeah. It's like stop. It's too late. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no. So I, I felt a lot of that same uplifting spirit throughout. This film as I did in Apollo 13. Same. Apollo 13, Same. one of my favorite movies because of that that effort that was put in by mm -hmm. so many people all yeah. over the world to do whatever they could. Um, Taking the impossible and making it possible through human ingenuity. I, that's, that's what yeah. it's all about, and it's beautiful to see when it comes together. It, so inspiring. And the level of detail that was put into that film... Um, if you were a space buff at all, you know the types of things that they mm -hmm. put in that movie that nobody will notice, oh, um, yeah. aside from the people that are absolutely nerdy about it, and the yeah. astronauts themselves. And John Lovell, <laughs> you know? the little artistic yeah. license here. <laughs> so oh, Matt man. and I, if... like, we have a story, too. Like, we, we watched Apollo 13 back in the day, and we had, like, the commentary on, and luckily John Lovell did the commentary for Apollo 13. He so does every... a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. If it's you awesome. have the old DVD, there are, I think, three or four different mm -hmm. commentary tracks on there. Yeah, and, and he's not uh, shy about telling you when they when they drift from reality. And he likes yeah. to say, little artistic yeah. license. Little artistic yeah. license here. Little artistic license. That's stuck with me for years now. So. Yeah, well, and if you want a real treat, listen to... Um, the commentary that him and his wife do mm -hmm. on the movie. Um, because obviously Marion Lovell is a big part of that film too. Oh yeah. And in reality, what is amazing is that those two got together in high school as boyfriend and girlfriend. They got married hearts. when Marion was 22 mm -hmm. and they're still together. Like I, I Beautiful. was so hopeful Beautiful. that it had gone on. You know, whenever I yeah. um, first started getting into space and all that uh, kind of stuff, I, I was impressed by it then. But that was... Back in like, you know, 1995. And uh, I hadn't looked into whether or not they were still together because so many of the um, the NASA or the Apollo era astronauts, their relationships just didn't make it. It was an incredibly stressful time. It wasn't well known how incredibly stressful um, the training yeah. and the environments and everything that the astronauts had to endure. You know, they're national heroes and largely many of them were chosen for that role because of how stoic and even keeled their mannerisms are right so they don't give away a whole lot that they're going through all this stress but it showed up in their their personal relationships and uh so luckily jim and marion have made it and um mm -hmm. are doing very well and you got to listen to that to that commentary because uh, they play off of each other and um he, uh, you, you can tell there's just the, the romance is still alive in that relationship and yep. it's pretty cool. But, uh, funny enough, just like the, uh, the actor who played Jim level, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson still going strong. So that's right. Love that's still right. does exist guys. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and the cast of Apollo 13, of course, is amazing. Everybody did a great job in their roles. Mm -hmm. um, funny enough, Jim Lovell, the actual astronaut, of course, he was an advisor on Apollo 13, he didn't think Tom Hanks would do a good job. He wanted Kevin <laughs> uh, Kevin Costner to play him. And oh. I, I'll oh. grant him that Kevin <laughs> Costner looks a lot more. It, pull up old photos of Jim Lovell, and he looks a lot more like Kevin Costner than he does Tom Hanks. Or Bob um, Odenkirk, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> so. um, but no, he, he did a great job portraying him. Even Marion, in the commentary says little stuff like you fold your legs like that jim or you know that's <laughs> your little face i mean he yeah. picked all this up you know so it's another one of my favorite authentic actors, movie tom hanks oh yeah <laughs> i think and catch him now us. on disney plus as geppetto but yes <laughs> yeah you can <laughs> but um no so a lot of similarities between how ron howard directed apollo 13 and how he did uh this one it yeah. feels um, very procedural. It feels mm -hmm. very authentic because it really is. Um, so you get, a, based on a true story, that actually follows the drama that was really part of that true story. And right. I, I value that so much more over the stuff that's mm -hmm. just falsely put in. You know, if there's any type of thing that you're not going to take license with, Keep the true stories true. Yeah, you know, we've been Keep talking it as about true on this as you channel. Can. Yeah, yeah, like the fictional universes and stuff. They're fiction, so by all means, it, it seems warranted play to play around. Yeah, you know, make it your own, that sort of thing. Um, but when they do that with these true stories, it falls flat, and it doesn't necessarily make for a bad movie. I mean, remember the Titans is a classic example oh. of like, well, yeah. That's a great movie. I really like that movie, but not a lot of that actually happened, you mm -hmm. know. So um, when you start looking into the real story, it's like, okay, well, why don't they just tell this, you know? But um, <laughs> is what it is. Now, Apollo thirteen, you get exactly a little what it shade was. on. Remember the Titans, guys, right there. <laughs> no, I do. I really <laughs> love the movie. I think it's Me a too. great one. Denzel Washington <laughs> does an amazing job. Right. Um, but it it's it's not that authentic to, to what happened to those mm -hmm. football players. But um, what happened to Apollo 13 uh, crew and um, the ground team is very much what you see in the film and more. So if you're interested, of course, Jim Lovell did write books about these experiences. Um, one of them is, of course, Apollo 13 uh, book that they based the movie on called Lost Moon. Okay. Um, and he also helped write another book called Apollo 8, and that was based on his first mission, technically to the moon, because he did get all he the way there. Martin. Yep. Right, circle rounds, where a lot of those uh, moon rise pictures or, mm -hmm. or video clips are taken from the Apollo 8 mission. Um, very, very cool book. Uh, you know, you think that you know... Uh, kind of the gist of the story but the level of detail that he puts in there about what it was like as a human being to yeah. go through the experience of being in space i mean everybody thinks it would be cool but then you get like a couple hundred thousand miles away from everything you've ever known in your entire life and there's no help anywhere <laughs> <laughs> there's no rescue operation possible um it can be mentally daunting. And so right. he talks about that experience as well. That's awesome. So. And like for our audience, if you want to read these type of things, I'm going to put some links down below uh, so you can check those out for yourself as well. I know I love mm -hmm. looking at those things and listening to those things. I use Audible a lot. So I'll try to find links yeah. for all those so that you can check them out yourself. Yep. Go ahead and check it out and check out this movie if you have an Amazon Prime account because it is definitely worth a couple hours of your time. It you definitely will be transported is. to this yeah. <laughs> to this so, story. So let's go into our reviews here. So uh, let's go into the ratings mm -hmm. on this this show right here, Thirteen Lives. So Matt, what do you give Thirteen Lives? So, um, and I. It, I was I can't believe I'm saying this, but this was a 10 out of 10 for me. Um, I really, really try to withhold that perfect score yeah. 
for something that I, you know, very much value. Like Shawshank Redemption for me is a ten mm. out of town. Ten out of ten. 10, out yep. of 10. That's a good United ninety three. Ten out of ten. You know, they they just and to me this felt a little bit like that. Like you're seeing these events unfold in front of mm-hmm. you for for real. And of course, it's all art, but um, because. It immersed me that much in this experience because I wanted to watch it again right away. Yeah, um, me too. Because I immediately wanted to talk to my friend about it or anybody that would listen mm-hmm. um, and could not find flaw in any of the performances down to the littlest extra. I don't know how they got that authentic of a performance from all 13 of those kids. Yeah. But I was scared to death every me time too. one of them would go in the water. You know? I mean... Yeah. It was incredible to watch. So, 10 out of 10 for me, man. What, what about you? Well, it's going to be <laughs> more the oh, yeah. same here. <laughs> 10 <laughs> out of 10 for me as well. What and again, you say? <laughs> I know. And for me, it's really hard for me. I, I want to find some sort of criticism to, to put in there. I, I don't like giving perfect scores either. But you're right. That's a good benchmark to, to set it by is Shawshank Redemption and other movies of that caliber in this hits the mark when it comes to that. And I knew as soon as I finished that movie that I was going to give this a 10 out of 10 because just it made me feel so much for the story, kept me engaged the entire time. The actors mm-hmm. were doing a phenomenal performance. The the film, the cinematography, everything lined up, the music, everything lined up perfectly for me. So I can't say enough good things about it. I even want to go and watch it right after we talk to you. I probably yeah. will will see it again tonight because it's such a good movie. It's rewatchable. It's so amazing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, 10 out of 10 for me, 10 out of 10 for Matt. We, if if you haven't guessed it, we're highly suggesting that you watch this. This is a a diamond yeah. in the rough for you. And, and one that definitely deserves a lot of praise. It definitely deserved a theatrical release, widespread as well. And it really mm-hmm. makes me wonder, too, you know, with Ron Howard, he does such a stellar job with these movies. I really wish we would have gotten uh, just a full movie about Solo from Ron Solo, Howard. He had to take over that film, <laughs> uh, like, yeah. midway through production and everything. And if he got to, to do that film from start to finish... I think we could have gotten something of the highest caliber, like these movies that he he creates, Mm -hmm. which are amazing. Uh, Cinderella Man is one of my most favorite boxing movies ever. A beautiful mind. A beautiful mind is is beautiful. And so, yeah, Ron Howard (laughs) just knocks it out of the park. So we just... I, I I hate the fact that like he didn't get his time to shine with Star Wars because you know he was directed mm-hmm. by George Lucas he he was friends with George Lucas and it, he he should have had that opportunity his daughter has directed episodes of The Mandalorian and those are some of the best episodes out there too yeah so Bryce Dow- yeah. Dallas Howard has done a phenomenal job so I really wish he would have gotten that opportunity with Solo maybe someday mm-hmm. in the future he'll get another shot at it but I don't know but again. Going back, circling back to this movie, it was amazing, and I can't say enough good things about it. So, 10 out of 10 for me, 10 out of 10 for Matt, and uh, do we have anything else to say before we depart these uh, these muddy waters underneath the cave? <laughs> no, I, I think we better quit while we're ahead, because I, I yeah. talked for hours about this movie. It was that oh, man, good. Yeah. So. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no artistic license there. It was amazing. Right. <laughs> so, from our families to yours, we hope you have a great Sunday, and... We hope to catch you next time here on Fatherly Phantom. Subscribe to the channel. Check out all our other videos. She-Hulk. We have uh, Rings, Rings of, of Power. Power. Andor is coming out this week, so we'll be covering that. So all yeah, the good House stuff. Of the House of the Dragon. Yep, exactly. So all that fun stuff. Check that out in the meantime, and we'll talk at you later. All right? Adios.